Roblox is a platform where pretty much anybody can create whatever they want. Because of that, it's only natural for people to try to recreate their favorite games on Roblox. As long as those games aren't made by the Nintendo, because they will take the remakes down. Now, I'm pretty interested in seeing if these game remakes are actually good, so I went on the Roblox search bar and looked up 5 games I really like in order to find out. Anyways, uh, I'm done with this intro because I can't think of anything else to add, so it's time to start talking about these games, starting with... Polydash is the recreation of Geometry Dash, a game I kind of like. Once the game loads, you have the option to change your icon, place in levels, or create your own levels. I decided to change my icon first, and there's a surprising amount of customization options. There's a lot of colors to choose from, 9 cubes, 6 ships, 2 balls, and 4 waves. After finish customizing my icon, I began playing the game. The first level is Stereo Madness, and it's pretty much identical to the official version. The game also controls surprisingly well, and it does a good job at keeping the Geometry Dash look while still being 3D. There's a lot of different levels here as well, mostly the official ones are in the game, and there's even some icons iconic custom levels that got put in here like the Nightmare. Like I said earlier, the game is a level editor just like the actual Geometry Dash, with the main difference being that the one here is in a game engine. The level editor here pretty much has only the basic stuff like orbs, portals, squares, and spikes, but you do have the option to edit things, so that's pretty cool. You can't exactly make a visually mind-blowing level with this editor, but I'm sure that people much more talented than I can make a pretty good layout. Once checking the actual game, you can upload levels in Polydash, so I decided to go around and try and find some good levels. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, so a lot of the levels in this game are of recent tab quality, which makes sense because the only way to sort through levels in this game is by I recent, though there is a search option. A lot of the levels I played were either poorly designed or just this. That being said, there is a level created by Roxas48 called hashtag 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 And honestly, I actually think the level has some fun gameplay, though it is a bit too short. And by too short, I mean it's like 5 seconds long. But Dash is a pretty good recreation of John Dash and Roblox, and I don't understand why it only got a 67% like rate. I I'm Steve. So, the Minecraft movie, am I right? This movie looks interesting to say the least, and well, I just need to play some more Minecraft to prepare for it. And so, the next game recreation I'm going to be talking about in this video is of Minecraft. After pressing the multiplayer option, I got sent to a server, and I was immediately taken aback by how accurate this game looks. This looks pretty much identical to the older versions of Minecraft, and I'm genuinely surprised at how well they managed to recreate it. Not only that, but the game runs really smoothly as well. I didn't really notice any major lag spikes or graphical errors. The main problem with this game is the microtransaction because I think that some things are way too overpriced. Like, is 32 Robux for 32 wooden planks really worth it? Getting wooden planks isn't really that hard, I got 20 of them in a minute into the game without spending a single penny. Anyways, after chopping some wood, I decided to go on a quest to look for some people because it was a couple of them on the server. I walked around for a while, found a cave, got some stone, and continued walking until I found this. A sheared sheep. This meant that I was on the right track to finding a person, so I kept going. I went into the desert, and as a guy got killed by a cactus in the chat, I'm not sure how that happens, I found some wooden planks, which meant that I was going the right way. After finding another Sheared sheep, I stumbled across a small wooden house. Finally, I found people. Unfortunately, there was nobody in the house. I was very sad. In order to find out if somebody still lives in that house, I put two signs there asking the homeowner to break them. If when I went back to the house, the signs were gone, then that means that somebody still lives there. In the meantime, I went caving in the game's marvelous caves where I stumbled across this. Somebody died here. Could it have been the mysterious homeowner? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I started to pay my respects, but my sign caught fire, so I unfortunately had to remove it. However, I still wanted something to remember this mysterious person I never met by, so I decided to pull up Mr. Krabs and to file his grave. Respectfully, of course, I had nothing to gain from doing this. I left the cave and went back to the house where I made a shocking discovery. The signs were gone. Somebody still lives here. And then somebody exited the house. Holy crap, it's Jack Steve. Black. I began jumping up and down to show that I come in peace. I was finally about to make a friend. Well, that just happened. <laughs> Watch that line be in the movie. However, not all hope was lost, as it was another person in spawn. I once again jumped up and down to show that I am a peaceful individual, but they just walked past me. It's at this point that I began wondering why nobody wanted to be my friend. I came to the conclusion that maybe it was something about my looks. I decided to press F5 to find out, and OH MY NOSH! No wonder everybody hates me! I look like a freak! <sighs> this guy is such a toolbag. And so, out of embarrassment, I quit the game. So that was Minecraft on Roblox. That microtransaction aside, it was pretty good and surprisingly accurate. It's obviously not as good as regular Minecraft. But if you want a free alternative, I think this is a good choice. Just be careful because some of the people in this game are really rude. <laughs>
Four blocks is of course the Roblox recreation of Fortnite, but without Mr. Beast, as far as I'm aware, which is probably for the best. This game has two modes, those being Legacy Fort Blocks and Battle Royale. Save the World is also here, but it's still in development. I decided to start with Legacy Fort Blocks, which isn't really a Battle Royale, you just kind of go in, die, and then respawn. I'm, I'm sure there's a much better way to describe that gameplay loop than I just did. Legacy Fort Blocks is also the only way to access the item shop and battle pass, so if you want to get the Chesburger sound effect, then this game mode is just for you. I started the game and landed at Tilted Towers because that's the Fortnite location. One thing I noticed is that you don't stop moving forward with the glider even if you stop holding W, which was kind of annoying. I'm not sure if this choice was intentional or not, and if it was, why? And it was the second I landed, I got shot and I died. I rejoined the game, but this time I didn't go to Tilted. My plan was to get some weapons and then return there to get my revenge. After I got some weapons, with one of them even being the legend, one, I went back to Tilted Towers to prove that I am in fact the best Fort Blocks player ever. I immediately found someone on top of the tower, and since he had a sniper, he may have been the one trying to kill me, so I began attacking. Unfortunately, I ran out of ammo on my weapons, and the guy retreated, so I decided to head inside of a building to heal. Okay, where did this bozo come from? One thing I noticed about this game is that for some reason the sniper HUD sometimes doesn't go away even if you don't have it selected, which is what led to my death. I say that, but knowing me, I probably would have died even if I had full health. Then I tried the battle royale mode, it's pretty much the exact same thing, but there's more people, a storm, and if you die, you have to join a completely different game. Also, if I had a guy with a Brian Griffin skin while playing this mode, I love copyright infringement. Four blocks is a pretty good Fortnite recreation, but it's probably my least favorite game on here. I think it just looks a bit too Robloxy, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I appreciate the fact that the other games here try to have their art style mimic the one from what they're based on. Last brawler standing, baby! Brawl Stars is probably one of my favorite free mobile games, and it's something I'd like to make a video on in the future, so I'm gonna keep this section really short. I'm mostly just putting it on here to bring more attention in this game because it was pretty good. The game starts off with a loading screen, which I don't usually point out as they're not really exciting, but for some reason, the loading screen for Brawl Blocks says, War is not needed, violence is not the solution. Whoa, that's pretty deep. The gameplay of this game is pretty much identical to Brawl Stars, so you do have more control of the camera movement. After finishing the tutorial, I was tasked with picking a brawler to unlock. I picked Poco because he's cool. However, I didn't end up unlocking him, so that was pretty sad. Brawl Blocks' game modes are also from Brawl Stars, those being Solo Showdown, Heist, Knockout, and Haw Zones. There could be more, but I didn't see them. However, there's also a boss fight game mode, which I don't think is in Brawl Stars, and for some reason there's a timer that goes down, and I don't think it actually means anything, so I don't know why it's here. That's all I'm gonna say about Brawl Blocks, because again, I'd like to make a Brawl Stars video something in the future, but just know this game is pretty good, and it's pretty accurate to the Brawl Stars. But that's at Freddy's, that's where I wanna be. I'm gonna end this video talking about a FNAF game, because I talk about one in every Roblox video. Why stop now? Also, now I get to put Freddy Fazbear in a thumbnail and tags in order to get more views, just like a real YouTuber would. Anyways, the game I'm going to be talking about is FNAF 1 but Security Breach. Now, you might be wondering why I don't just talk about an actual FNAF 1 remake instead of this. Once the third of the game, I was immediately surprised because I was Glamour Chica, not a security guard. So as it turns out, this game was not exactly a one-to-one -one remake of FNAF 1. You see, this game has endless rounds, and every round you can be either a security guard or an animatronic, so th that's pretty cool, I guess. A security guard works as they do in the actual game, but as an animatronic, you have to wait for movement opportunities to slowly make your way to the office. However, if the guard is looking at you through the camera with the lights on, then you can't move. Also, if you go into first person mode as an animatronic, you can actually see what the animatronic sees, which is a nice detail. I began making my way to the security office, and eventually I made it there and jump scared the security guard. In the next round, I was a security guard, and I was actually doing pretty well for a while. That is, until Roxy began coming out of Pirate Cove. Now, in the FNAF 1 parts of Help Wanted, Foxy is our biggest enemy. He's a despicable little individual because, unlike in the original game, I can't just spam cameras and stall him even if I'm not on his cam. I actually have to close the door in time before he runs into the office and jump scares me, and since I have bad reaction time, I have to be safe and keep the door closed until he resets. However, for some reason, whoever was controlling Roxy in this game just refused to move, so I kept my door closed the entire time, and at around 4am, I ran out of power and immediately got jump scared by Roxy. Anyways, next round, I was Monty the Rizzler and I jump scared the guard again. Cool. This game is pretty fun and a good remake of the first FNAF game, at least in terms of gameplay. That being said, I'm pretty sure I played a game very similar to this a long time ago that was not security breach related, so I have no idea if this game is a copy of that or not. If one of you know, let me know in the comments. Also, there's some skins you can buy with points, so if you want to play as the gamer in FNAF 1, then this game is for you. Well, I have nothing else to say about this, so uh, time to end the video, I guess. In conclusion, I'm surprised at the quality of the games in this video. Obviously, none of these are better than the games they're based on, but for Roblox recreation, they're really good. Hopefully someone makes a 100% accurate Minion Rush remake sometime in the future. Uh, sorry this ending seems a little rushed. I just didn't really have a lot to say about the last two games, and I don't have a lot to say now, and I'd honestly just rather say less things than have a bunch of pointless filler. Now, if you excuse me, I've got to go play some more Roblox Minecraft, just so I'm ready for when Peak Cinema comes out. I'm sure this movie won't get negative reviews at all. Uh, but I guess.